Hi everybody, I'm Stacy, and I am so excited that you're here. Uh, I am getting ready to experiment some more. Surprise, surprise. Any of you that watch me before know I love to do that. I'm always doing that, some way or form. Um, this time, what I have in mind is, um, I am, well, I tried my latest and and favorite bloom recipe with Craft Neat Bright Tone out on an 11 by 14 inch canvas, just doing one bloom. Not a bunch of separate ones, just one bloom on that size canvas, you know, one big bloom. And I thought it turned out great. I thought it was fantastic. So here we are again with the next size up that I have. And that has got a bump in it. Ugh, that won't work. Anyway, I thought we would try it with um, this size canvas. Hang on just one second. Okay, folks, sorry about that. I didn't realize that canvas had a little bump in it. And that's the second one today that I've gotten my hands on. Well, these are old, you know, these are, are ones that I've done before. This one crazy, so I don't know. I just decided I didn't like that other one. Anyway, this one has no bumps in it, so it'll work. And I'm going to try to do just one big bloom on this canvas. And I've mixed up a bunch of paint to use because I know it's going to take quite a bit of paint. My question about it is my problem, my issue, is that I've had trouble blowing them out because it takes a lot of air for one thing to blow that much. And I don't have that much. And the other thing is... The angle is really hard to get, and I dumped half my paint out the last time trying to, when I tilted it to, to blow to the side, when I tilted it, I ended up pouring some of it out and not realizing it. Fortunately, I had enough paint, it didn't cause a problem. But for this big one, uh, I'm contemplating how I'm going to prevent um, that from reoccurring. And... Um, I think that um, what I may end up just having to do is take the canvas. I may just have to get up out of this um, pouring table, or I'm going to try. I'm going to try. First of all, here's what we'll do. I'm going to try using my airbrush, and I can just reach over and do it. We'll try that, and if that doesn't work, we'll have to really improvise. Okay, so it's going to be a roller coaster. I don't know. I'm just um, dying to see how big I can get just one bloom. You know, a lot of people are doing a whole bunch of different individual ones on, on a bigger canvas and then tilting them. Um, and at the end of it, they don't look like a bloom anymore. They, Not that they're not pretty or anything. I'm not saying negative. I'm just saying they don't look like a flower anymore uh, or a bloom. So I want to see if I can get one bloom on a big canvas. And we're going to see right now. Um, the other thing, let me go over it real quick. This recipe is, I've listed it in detail in my video that's labeled Today's Blooms. So I'm not going to go through it again in detail. It's Glidden Premium Semi-Gloss House Paint Base 1 and Base 3 for your pouring medium and for your pillow. And, uh, I add a little GAC 800 to the pillow, just about that much. Um, I personally add silicone to my colors. And this time I made a pour in medium because I didn't want to use white, so I wanted to use gold. So I used just some Deco Art, a t like a tablespoon of Deco Art, uh, 24 karat gold paint, and about three tablespoons of Floetrol, and then I put some silicone in it. What the hell? Why not? You know, I don't know what's going to happen. Um, I put silicone in my uh, others before, and I thought it helps. So I, I. I'm not one of these people who wants to cut back on silicone. I personally don't understand the reasoning for that. Does it cause cancer? Does it cause the coronavirus? I mean, I don't think so. So, what is the big deal? Uh, I like it. It works. It helps. So, I'm going to go with it. Anyway, um, let's see what we got here. I am just contemplating which color to start with. I think we'll start with purple because I have the most of that. Um, this time... Um, let me correct myself real quick because I said 
Craft Nick Bright Tone. And that's not entirely true this time. Because I had some of that Josana's left over and I wanted to go ahead and use it. So it's mostly Josana's partly Bright Tone. Um, so it's a little bit of both on this one. And that is at a 3 to 1 ratio with the base tint. It is three parts base tint and one part varnish. And that's the recipe I go by no matter what varnish I'm using or trying out. I've done it with Polycrylic. I've done it with Josana's. I've done it with Bright Tone. I've tried other ratios. I think this one works the best. You know, I've tried two parts varnish, you know, uh, three parts paint, and, you know, all different kinds of combinations of that. But this is what I think works the best for me. And, um, you know, I hope that if anybody is out there struggling with these blooms, if you watch these latest videos, um, I think it will help you. Um, this is what turned me around because I had only been working on them a month or something and I was struggling and I was having cracking, uh, crazing, and these holes that kept popping in the colors. Um, I didn't know what the hell was going on. And... Um, I got a hold of Jen Neal, whose work is, you know, I've, I've always just liked. And um, so I told her, you know, what was going on. And she suggested I follow this recipe. And I did. And I, I broke my own rules. Y'all know I don't measure and, you know, get out measuring spoons and stuff like that. But I did. Because I said, by God, if I'm going to do this and take her recipe... And at the end of it, I want to be able to say, yeah, I tried Jen Neal's recipe and X, Y, and Z happened. If I'm going to do that, then I need to really give it a good try. I really need to try to replicate it as closely as possible. So I measured things and um, I did it. I, that's what prompted me to get the Glidden paint. Because I was using Color Smart from Walmart because I had heard that was okay. For, for me, it is most definitely not okay. Because changing the Glidden paint turned everything around. And then the Craft Neat Bright Tone was another game changer. But you can do this with any varnish. Let's be clear. You don't have to have, you know, any one specific one. I personally think the Bright Tone works best. But, um, anyway. I just um, want to give out as much information about this as I possibly can without trying to go through it all every single video. Um, if you're working on these blooms, check out that one where I've, I've written in the description you know, the detailed recipe and everything else. And, you know, he'll ask me a question. If you have one, if I know the answer, I'll give it to you. If I've done it, I can tell you. And there's a whole bunch about this that I have done because I don't have another job. This is what I do 24-7. And when I start working on something, I'm going—I'm like a dog with a bone. I'm going to work on it until I get it right. And um, that's what's happened with this. And it's only been like a month or so. But um, I think this recipe is as close to perfecting it as I'm going to get and I'm perfectly satisfied with it. So, anyway, enough of all that. Um, this here reminds me of uh, Dioxazine Purple, but it's not. It's Master's Touch Violet, and I think that's what we're going to start with. And um, I'm just going to try to keep this. I know my table is not exactly centered, of course. People who have watched me before are going, no big surprise there. Uh, it's never been level. Um, but I'm getting closer um, because I built this new pouring table yesterday. I went to Lowe's and I got the wood and I got out of the drill and I built it. It only took me about 15 minutes and it cost me $7. And it's already by far way better than what I was doing. It is still slightly tilted, um, and that's because of what it's sitting on, because there's a vise underneath there used to stretch uh, stained glass lead, and it's sitting on that. And I gotta kinda adjust it around it somehow. This is Liquitex Turquoise. I'm just dying to know if this works. I just want to see what it does. And and if you can't make one full bloom out of it, you know, we'll salvage it some way. But um, I'm just dying to know if you can do one 
dig blue. I, I, I just know you have to be able to. I just know. I just never have seen it done. <sighs> See, that's already trying to, it's trying to slide. And I don't want it to. But even if it wasn't, it probably would slide some no matter what. So it's sliding a little bit. Yeah, I put a few drops of silicone in here. There's, you know, like I put as much as I do in my regular paintings, which is a pretty good squirt. I don't see any problem with it. Um, and it helps with the cells because even with the bright tone, I still wasn't really seeing a whole bunch of cells. I got some, but not like what I wanted to see. And so I was on a quest again to try to figure out why that is or what I could do about it. You know, same old story. And uh, this is what I have come up with. The use of the silicone. I'll do anything it takes. I mean, I don't care um, if other people aren't doing it or other people say you shouldn't do it or whatever else. I don't care. Um, I'm out to try to make the most beautiful art I can make. And um, I, I sort of am a rule breaker anyway. So that's just kind of the way I feel about it. That right there is cobalt. I forgot to tell y'all the colors. Liquitex Turquoise is the second one after the purple. Then you have um, Thalo Blue by Master by Liquitex. The greenish color is Turquoise Green by Master's Touch. And this is Master's Touch Cobalt Blue. Alrighty. Then we have the last one. And this might be too much paint. I didn't know how much paint to put on here. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just playing, trying to figure it out. You know, we may have to pour some off. I don't know. I love that green. That is uh, Liquitex Lime Green. Um, and it's one of my favorite colors. All right. Now then. The cell activator is this 24 karat gold. And I don't like it doing that. I want it to go back to the middle. Okay. I'm going to have to move that with my hand a little bit. Okay. I have seen this done before. Don't panic. Um, seen this done with the little canvases when, when it starts to migrate on you. You kind of push it up just a little bit just to make it a little easier to blow so it's not so spread out. said no need to panic it will be fine okay cool ready to go I'm gonna torch it but I'm not gonna do that now um, first of all we're gonna blow it out because that creates a bunch of air bubbles too um, let me try to stick in this glove underneath here for right now to try to make that level so I don't have to fight with it. Well, that might do. Okay. Let's turn on the thingy. And see. Okay. That's high. Not very high, is it? Well, this may not work as far as the um, pulling out the center part. Hmm. 
Well, yeah, I just need to work with it a little bit. I'm going to just play for a few minutes um, because I think I think what I need to do I'm going to blow that center with my mouth and then I'm going to put it back and use this to start to spread it out that's what I'm going to try to do may take a while y'all <laughs> but I do like the way it's doing it's pretty maybe I'll get a little more adept with it in a minute I gotta move my hand this way for a few minutes because it hurts. I think the key to this is probably to keep the uh, airstream floating um, just above and along the same plane as the paint. In other words, don't dig down into it. I think that's what I'm going for. I really don't have a clue because I've never done this before. I'm just thinking out loud. I did not go anywhere today. I did not go anywhere yesterday. I don't remember. I think I went to Lowe's three or four days ago because I was out of flow trawl. See right there, I wanted to pick up a little bit of that blue, so I dipped it down a little bit, but I think maybe uh, that keeps getting in there. Let's come back this way for a minute, just so I can change my positioning. I know I could use a hair dryer or my heat gun. I know I could. Uh, I've done that before. Um, but I wanted to do something, to try something different for one thing. Um, because there are things I like and things I dislike about using both of those other implements. And I wanted to see if I could find something that made me a little happier all the way around. Um, what I think works really the absolute best is just blowing it with your mouth. But I don't have the air to blow this much. And even if I did, like I told you, I had issues with positioning trying to do that. I was pouring my paint off because I was tilting the canvas trying to blow. And it got really complicated really fast. And uh, I ended up pouring, pouring paint off on the floor. And, I mean, it worked out. Don't get me wrong. It, it was beautiful. But... Um, I just uh, don't like what's that doing. See, look at these cells over here forming. Look at that. Over there. I think that right there is the silicone at work. Anyway, um, when the blower blows, it just sort of hits it all like a typhoon. And I don't have enough control over where uh, what colors go where or how things mix I don't like that um, 
I'd like to have a little more control than that. This gives you a whole lot of control, um, but it's slower. Um, it's a more painstaking process. Um, so now we know the table is slanted towards me as well, obviously. Um, the heat gun, the problem with using the heat gun, the heat gun has about the right pressure, um, but my heat gun is sealed with resin. <laughs> the button has become indefinitely connected to itself via resin. So I can't change it to a cool setting. And I tried doing it with the warm setting and it <clears throat> you can get by with it a little bit, just very, if you're very careful, but it will cook that paint real quick if you're not. And um, so I don't like doing that. I don't like to have to be that careful and monitoring and worrying and all that. It was disturbing me, so. Okay, I gotta tilt the canvas again. It's running off over here. Well, this may not be a traditional one, but um, I'll figure out something. Now see, Farley wants to get in a real big hurry and get out that hair dryer and blast this thing. <laughs> but I've done that before and we're doing something different, so we're not going to do that. We're trying something new. Gosh, it's important to try new things. So important. It's a very awkward angle to have to do this at. I could turn the canvas around, I guess. Duh. That's using your head space. Yeah. Really smart. <laughs> that makes that a little easier. It's kind of hard to keep this little thing just balanced right at the same level as the surface of the paint. But I think that's what I need to do. I don't know why I think that. I just think that. I think that because that way it skirts along each new color without gouging so much. <sighs> Oh, I think it just, it just shuts itself off after time. Oh, that freaked me out. I don't, I don't, I don't remember this thing having a time limit on it.
See, that was a little gouty. I didn't like that. Change my hand position. I'm going to make it a little smoother. I just want to scar along the top of the paint and pick up each one of the colors and drag them together. But I don't want to dig way down deep and, you know, to get them all messed up. Well, it's a smear kind of. Now, mm. this doesn't have as much crack nick in it, so I'm not seeing a whole bunch of air bubbles. It's going to be kind of a long video. I'm going to fast forward if you get bored, but it just takes what it takes. You know, I can't, I can't hurry it up. Let the weight get back in the center, and then we're going to that corner over there. I hope it ends up pretty because this takes quite a bit of paint to do this. The paint's not cheap and we don't all have a lot of access to it these days. Our Hobby Lobby closed finally like they all have. Um, ours, they held out till the end, those guys. Uh, but they finally had to close and uh, 
So now whatever I need, I'm gonna have to order. I suppose. And I don't wanna lose all this pretty colored stuff over here. And it's looking like it's gonna try to do that. So I'm gonna stop it as best I can to stop it. Well, it doesn't exactly look like a balloon anymore. Uh, not really. Um, but we're not done. I do realize I just smudged the corners there, but I gotta think for a minute. That's pretty. I mean, it's a lot of green in the middle. So I'm not really all that jazzed about that. And I didn't wanna have to put another bloom in there. I wanted this to just be one bloom. And I could get by with it being that. Uh, I'm just not sure. I gotta get that smudge I just made on the corner off of there. I'm not an idiot. I can't believe I did that. Oh well. Sometimes when you make a stupid mistake like that, is when something happens that helps you figure out the answer to a bigger problem. But that's definitely too much green. I can't have that. I'm gonna have to do something. Um, I'm just letting that move. I'm thinking if I can stretch the blue route um, into the green some more, I'd be okay with that. It's still moving. It's just kind of slow. Now this is not, doesn't have very much bright tone in it. And I'm telling you, to me, I think it's pretty. I think the colors are pretty. Don't get me wrong. Um, but they don't pop like they do with the bright tone. They don't, um, they don't, the lacing is not the same. There's not as much of it. It's not as clear and defined and it's not as intricate. But this was an experimental piece anyway. And I like it. I, I think it's unusual and um, pretty. It's just not, um, well, it's never what you expect, is it? hardly ever do one and think, well, I knew exactly how that was going to turn out. <laughs> and look at it, it did. What is this right here? Okay. Something in there. I knew that was something. Now i got to fix that smudge. But I knew that was something in there. I kept looking at that and thinking, that is something. 
I see another something. I'm gonna take my glove off to get it though. Okay. Where does stuff come from that ends up in my work? I just do not know. How the hell with the gloves? I was doing a, a wood round the other day and I kept finding little pieces of shit all in it. And I could not, I had wiped that thing down. I had varnished it with polycrylic to seal it. And I kept finding pieces of stuff just all in there. Okay, I'm not going to worry about covering this corner. And I'll tell you why. Because I like what I've got there. I don't want to pull it down any further. And I got plenty of leftover paint. Okay. I'm just blending that corner a little bit. Can't just go swapping a bunch of uh, new paint on there and not blend it a little bit. Okay. 